All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm Folygon, and this is going to be part two of our Diva Sculpt. So many of you were asking for me to kind of create Diva here, so I figured it was about time that you know I I answered the call and was a, a good good creator for for the people that enjoy at least some of my work <laughs> and try to create uh, you know something that you guys are asking for for once. So Diva, here we go. You know our face is looking. Pretty masculine. Uh, we, we got some of the round shapes in here that we're going to need for the character. But overall, this isn't anywhere close to the proportions or character that we're going to create in the end. So still at this point, we're just trying to get all the parts and pieces in here. And I'm still just kind of adjusting everything, you know, moving stuff around, using my move brush, using uh, just a couple brushes here, mainly the move and kind of the clay tubes and just smooth stuff out as well. So, I was talking in the last video about how it's about time that we kind of adjust these eyes, put some eyelids in here. So, what I'm going to do is use one of my favorite methods, which is just using a curved tube snap brush. The default settings, it's just a brush that comes in here, B, C, and then it's somewhere around here. Here it is, B, C, X it looks like. So, curved tube snap, pretty cool for a lot of things. I use it for hair, I use it for eyelids here like I'm doing. Uh, it just has kind of a lot of uses, and that's pretty good um, for our basic eyelid here. You know, I don't really need anything crazy, uh, so we can go ahead and start with this as our, our base eyelid as long as I can, you know, select it. And then uh, from there, we can kind of just use our move brush and get it into place. So again, this doesn't have to be perfect or have to be the exact shape that we're going to end it on and on for this uh, eyelid but it does have to be um, just kind of placed in there so we know where well at least to get a basic start here so we know where everything is so I'll do the same thing for the lower lid and that one's quite a bit bigger so we can kind of increase our draw size or decrease our draw size to get that to fit and that'll be close enough for what we need for our purposes here so, moving that back in over to the corner of the eye and uh, just kind of repositioning this one in the corner as well. And again, one of the things that's really hard, at least about, at least in my opinion, is that when you're sculpting a character or you know, just when you're sculpting in general, especially in ZBrush, because, well, you know what, not especially in ZBrush, I would say especially in clay because it's so much slower, but, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to, when you start blocking stuff out or you're in this early stage, it's easy to get down about your work and what you're creating here, and yeah, it can look ugly sometimes, but... You gotta, you gotta kind of just be able to see past that. You gotta be able to see kind of the character in the, so to speak, the marble, right? So when great artists back then were sculpting things in marble, you know, five percent of the way in, uh, it looked pretty, pretty crap. I bet I would guess. So we just kind of need to understand that hey, we're just starting this new thing and. Uh, it's gonna take a while before it starts to look good, so it's okay for it to look pretty shit right now, but eventually it will look less so. So let's go ahead and get these eyes in the correct material and colors, and that is not the correct material. We do not want um, skin shade. I actually wanted toy plastic. Toy plastic is just kind of good for an eye material, basic eye material, at least for starting out. There's some other stuff that you can modify with it, including wax modifiers to kind of make it look a bit more realistic. And then there are other materials and other modifications that you can do to this material to make it look even closer. So we have that in there. Helps if you shift your light down a little bit so you can kind of see the eye reflection. I'm not a huge fan of keeping my light in the middle though just because it kind of makes everything look a bit more flat depending on what material material that you are using. I'm using my Folygon basic material which you can get over on my Patreon. So let's go ahead and keep pushing these eyelids 
into position. I'm gonna just smooth them out very roughly here. And what's great about putting all this stuff in is that as I'm doing this, I can already start to see that, yeah, okay, I need to kind of pull this shape in more. So that's why I do this stuff where I start to kind of put all the parts in as quick as I can, because it really does start to um, let you know where everything else is kind of failing. So you can kind of correct a bunch of that stuff. And I'm just gonna, you know, use that pinch brush again like I did in the past. So as I create and subdivide and get more geometry, I also need to smooth. And uh, when I do that, I can kind of lose some of the shapes that I created there. So that's not good. We want to keep a lot of that stuff. So let's kind of mess with our profile here just to make sure that everything still is working. That's the tough thing about 3D. If you don't know, <laughs> 3D versus 2D. Yeah, 2D, it just has to look good from one angle, one view. But in 3D, it's, uh, you know, it takes a bit more time. You kinda, kinda got a few more views, and by a few more, I mean you got like every view possible <laughs> to look at this thing from. And it has to look good from every single one of those views. Uh, well, it doesn't have to, I guess, but uh, I, I want it to look good from every view. Or at least the best that I can, the best that I can make it. So still just kind of trying to adjust shapes and uh, kind of get the proportions right here. You can see that the cheeks are really sunken in. The light from the front really deepens that shadow. So we'll probably, you know, maybe take a trim brush to here and try to fill that in a bit. As well as making the chin uh, quite a bit less blocky. It's really uh, not as sharp and narrow as we probably want. So we can maybe start to adjust some of these bigger proportions. It'll be good to do that now while we still can. Uh, you know, once you kind of start getting into it, you don't want to get too attached to, to that kind of stuff. And then just, you look at it so long, it becomes kind of, um, kind of, kind of second nature, I guess. Maybe that's not the right word, but you can't un you can't like see your mistakes essentially they just kind of they're there they're a part of your sculpt they're a part of your character they've been there for the past 3 hours you've been working on this thing so <laughs> why would you fix it it looks fine and then you walk away for 5 minutes come back and holy crap like how did i not notice this uh, so it's good to you know switch your materials from time to time uh, that kind of thing as well as you know taking some screenshots Turning on perspective, these all these kind of things can give you a new view to look at your character or or mesh from, so you can kind of see what's wrong, see what you need to fix, and make those changes appropriately. Kind of a question that I get a lot is how do you know, like, you talk about jumping around on your mesh a lot, and where do you know, like, where to work next? Like, why aren't you working on the nose right now, and why are you working on the eyes? Like, where should you be spending your time on your character? And essentially, it's like, whatever's bothering me the most. And right now, these eyelids are bothering me the most. Uh, and the eyes are super important, I know, for, for any character. They're kind of one of the huge uh, focal points for the face here, and for just the character in general. So I want the eyes to kind of, in the beginning, to start getting closer to what the finished eye is gonna look like. And it doesn't have to be exact. I don't have to spend, you know, two hours just working on the eyes and not focus on anything else. And maybe I could do that, but I just wanna get it a little bit, um, well, better looking than it is now and attempt to get that, uh, you know, closer to what I envision the end kind of eye looking like. And a lot of that stuff kind of, like I said, works together and it plays together, so you might need to make changes to to larger portions, uh, kind of like your eyeballs might be too big, but if you're going for that anime diva style character, then maybe that's what you're looking for. So Focus a little bit on the nose here, just for a tiny bit, just to kind of make it look a little less 
well, <laughs> bulbous is kind of the word that it's that I would use right now, at least. Um, <clears throat> especially on female characters, up towards the bridge of the nose, uh, you'll see this on males a lot too, but it starts to kind of really start to blend in. And this just really depends on your, the character that you're creating or trying to represent. But uh, a lot of the time it really starts to get close to um, the face. It kind of starts to blend in a bit more. And what is called the nasolabial folds, I believe is the correct term. It's just kind of this ring of fat and wrinkle that you got going around your face here. And uh, that, that really helps to blend it in as well. So I'll smooth that out a little bit more here, and I'll keep working on this in the next episode. So I will see you guys in part three, where we will continue working on the eyes, nose, mouth, ears, and start working on some of these more, more defining features of the character. So I will see you guys in the next episode.